जय श्री राम वेलकम टू अनदर कैंटो ऑफ श्रीमद वाल्मीकि रामायण एंड वी विल टुगेदर रीड ईच वर्स ऑफ दिस टाइमलेस एपिक इन द फिफ्थ कैंटो ऑफ रामायण वाल्मीकि जी हैज गिवन अ डिटेल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ अयोध्या सिटी और कल्चरल हेरिटेज ही टॉक्स अबाउट आर्किटेक्चर ग्रैंड एंड द सिक्योरिटी आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द सिटी इन दिस सिक्स कैंटो एज वेल He continues the portrayal of Ayodhya under the rule of King Dashrat. This canto has twenty-eight shlokas. So let us begin the reading by invoking Lord Ganesh and Lord Hanuman. Om Gan Gan Patay Namaha. Om Han Hanumate Namaha. Shri Mad Valmiki Ramayan Balya Kant, Canto Six. In the beginning of Canto VI, Valmiki ji compares rule of King Dashrath to that of Manu, the mind-born son of Lord Brahma, the first and foremost ruler of the mankind. He says, "Just as the glorious Manu protected the mankind, so does King Dashrath. Ruling from the city of Ayodhya, he not just protects his people, but the entire world." he is mighty and destroyer of the enemies at the same time has many good friends and allies he is the hero of ikshvaku dynasty he is far sighted and has accumulated all the resources his wealth and possessions are at par with those of indra and kuber he is well versed with vedas and has perfect control over his senses dashrath is highly glorious virtuous and regularly performs vedic rituals he is a royal sage like a maharishi he is renowned in all the three worlds he is loved by both urban population and countrymen alike he is true to his word and adheres to threefold virtues He rules this magnificent city just as Indra rules Amravati. People of Ayodhya city are exuberant, yet virtuous and well-read learned scholars. They always speak the truth. They are not greedy and are completely satisfied with their wealth. In this city there is not a single impoverished household. There is no family who has not earned their means and does not possess the wealth of food grains cattle and horses it is impossible to find a lusty miser cruel ignorant or atheist person anywhere in ayodhya all the citizens of ayodhya be it men or women are virtuous minded self controlled and self satisfied just like great sages they are spotless and pure in their character and conduct also they are well groomed you cannot find an unhygienic person everyone applies ointments and fragrances on the body there is no one without earrings headgear or a garland nor do they lack any other worldly enjoyments there is not a single person without ornaments everyone wears bracelet in hands armlets in upper arms and jewelry around their neck everyone is charitable and nobody ends up starving people are naturally self restrained there is no one who does not kindle and worship the sacred fire of yagya or doesn't perform the sacrificial rituals in ayodhya you cannot find a single mean minded person a thief or an immoral person of impure origin the brahmins have conquered their senses and are always engaged in rituals they donate the education of vedas to their students and pursue their own studies as well also they are principled while accepting the donations during this era there is no one who is atheist liar incompetent illiterate or jealous of others here everyone has mastered the knowledge of ved and vedang the six ancillary vedic subjects 
Everyone performs religious vows and rituals and donates in thousands. There is nobody who is distracted, depressed or agonized. It is impossible to find a person in Ayodhya, be it man or woman, who is devoid of wealth, beauty, elegance or devotion towards their king. In this excellent city, people worship the gods and guests alike. Atithi Deva Bhava Everyone is having a sense of gratitude. They are faithful, illustrious, valiant and brave. People are virtuous and truthful. All the men here live a long life along with wife, sons and grandsons. People belonging to all four castes diligently perform their duties. Brahmins are the first of four Varnas. Kshatriya, the warrior class, seek guidance from the scholarly class of Brahmins. Vaishya, the merchant class, follow the Kshatriya. And Shudra, the working class, they assist the other three Varnas. Ikshvaku king Dashrat has well protected the city of Ayodhya from all the sides. Just like Manu, the foremost king of mankind, did in earlier times. Like a cave full of lions, Ayodhya is filled with fearless and skilled warriors. They are almost like flaming fire, determined and passionate experts trained to protect the city. The city is known for its best horses, which are born and bred in Kamboj, Bahalik, Vanayu and other regions with riverbeds. These horses are as majestic as the divine horse of Lord Indra. The city is full of vigorous and mighty elephants born in Vindhya and Himalayan regions. Strong and huge, these elephants themselves look like a mountain. These elephants come from the lineage of Eravat and also from the family of Mahapadma, Anjana and Vaman. These elephants breed from the mainly three races, Bhadra, Mandra and Mrik and also interbreed of these three races, Bhadra and Mandra, Bhadra and Mrik, Mrik and Mandra. These elephants are known for their strength and stamina. King Dashrath lives in this city and has fortified up to two yojans outside the city limits as well. Thus, Ayodhya city is impregnable, very much worthy of its name, a Yodhya, that is, unassailable one. The great and mighty king Dashrath has silenced his enemies and maintained peace and order. He governs the world from the city of Ayodhya just like night moon governing the stars. He rules this blessed and invincible city of Ayodhya, which is indeed worthy of its name. Well protected with strong gates and bars, such a magnificent and auspicious city, adorned with beautiful arches and well-designed housing for thousands of people and their families. And as such, King Dashrath almost equals Lord Indra in splendor. In this canto, Ayodhya is portrayed as a prosperous, harmonious and culturally rich city which is secure and well protected with skilled warriors, majestic horses and mighty elephants. We also met virtuous and prosperous citizens of Ayodhya. King Dashrath is depicted as a great ruler governing Ayodhya with authority and prosperity. And thus, ends the Canto 6 in the Bal Kanda of Srimad Ramayan, the first and oldest epic by Rishi Valmiki. Thank you so much for listening. We will return next Tuesday and take a close look at the governance in Ayodhya. Till then, stay blessed, stay tuned, like, share, subscribe and do comment. Jai Siyaram, Har Har Mahadev.